Live from Bellevue, Washington, it's theCUBE. Covering Smartsheet Engage 18. Brought to you by Smartsheet. Welcome back to theCUBE's continuing coverage of Smartsheet Engage 2018. I am Lisa Martin, sitting here in Bellevue, Washington with a couple of smart sheeters. Next to me is Ben Canning, the VP of Product Management. Hey Ben. Hey. And Ignacio Martinez, the VP of Security, Risk, and Compliance. Guys, thank you so much for carving out time in a very packed event agenda to come and chat with us on theCUBE. Happy to be here. Happy to be so here. So this is a really interesting event. A couple of things that, that really stood out to me uh, this morning in the keynote, as I was telling you, we cover a lot of events here on theCUBE of all sizes, and it was really interesting how your CEO, Mark Bader, who was on the program earlier this morning, went out into the audience yeah. and asked, talk about engage in action, I thought that was fantastic, um, and asked customers, randomly three customers, I think, how are you being empowered by Smartsheet? And how these customers were able to get up and articulately talk about this, the value that Smartsheet is delivering to their business, I thought that, that customer connection was very, uh, was, was really quite memorable. And then additionally, product management, when Gene Farrell came out mm -hmm. um, and to the round of applause a number of times yeah. during announcements of new enhancements and features and what that really... Multi-assigned too. Yes, what that really uh, sort of said to me is, you guys deliver software that is a facilitator of collaboration that is essential to drive businesses, digital transformation, et cetera, but you're collaborating with them because clearly they were very happy to hear about a number of these yeah. announcements today. Yeah, we have very, very passionate customers. It's one of the great things about working here and working with these customers. We're super focused on what do those customers need and how do we enable them to get those things done. You know, we don't typically get imposed from the top down by IT. You're using Smartsheet because you chose to use it. It's the thing that makes you know, your life easier. Um, and we, we never forget that, and we never forget you know, that, that we need to keep that close connection with, uh, with our customers. And I, I think you see it here uh, you know, at the conference today. Um, you do, you've got 50 customers plus speaking in breakout sessions, which for an event that's got about 2,000 people is a huge percentage. Yeah. Um, some great announcements. Before we get into some of the risk and compliance stuff, Ignacio. Ben, walk us through maybe a high level of some of the key enhancements that were announced this morning. Well, so uh, we, we talked about a lot of things today. I think we had over 23 you know, total announcements. Uh, you know, things from uh, you know, the, the range of uh, multiple, uh, being able to assign multiple people in, uh, in the grid uh, to uh, dynamic view, which we're incredibly excited about that allows you uh, to have custom views on, uh, on a sheet and control who gets access to which view. Uh, really opens up tremendous new possibilities for a smart sheet. Um, some of the things that I get super excited about, I, I work a lot in the sort of platform and administrative space. Um, we've announced a number of things this week that are all about helping uh, IT administrators and system admins manage Smartsheet much more effectively when it gets to sort of large scale. Uh, and I'll, I'll highlight uh, a couple of them. One, one is the directory integration uh, capability that we've, we've done. Um, we hear a lot from our customers that you know, I, managing individual Smartsheet users is really kind of, you know, gets kind of hard once you get over, uh, over a number. And I, I want to be able to to see all the people in my organization and be able to share with them and assign tasks with them, even if they're not yet uh, Smartsheet users. So what, we're, uh, what we announced today was a way to integrate Active Directory uh, with Smartsheet so that you know, the, the company directory of all the users in the company uh, is automatically synchronized into Smartsheet so that those users can be, uh, you can assign things to them, you can at mention them, they'll show up in the grid with their faces and their, all their departmental information um, it makes it much easier to manage users inside your organization. So when 100 people join the team, they automatically show up in Smartsheet. When someone leaves the organization, they get deep provision. Um, and it, 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 it makes it much easier to collaborate with folks throughout your organization uh, than it ever has been before. Uh, so we're really excited to announce that as a, as a product for our enterprise customers uh, uh, starting a little bit later this, uh, this year. Excellent, you've got, you've got customers, I was reading uh, during my prep for the show, over 75,000 customers in 190 countries of right. all industries. Yes. And I imagine, some of the things that we've heard guys from your customers on the program today that they're 
really benefiting from are the visibility, the configurability of the technology, the ability to have accountability um, to not only improve workforce productivity, but to be able to eliminate duplicate tasks, give project owners and initiative owners full visibility whereas they had, did not have that full visibility before. Ignacio, another big announcement that came out today was what you guys are doing in the federal space. So tell us a little bit about FedRAMP, what that is, and how you're working with them. Sure, so without boring you to death on FedRAMP, I'll give you a quick overview. FedRAMP is a requirement of the federal government. It's a program developed by the government to essentially certify or authorize cloud service providers like Smartsheet to be meeting a certain security level of compliance to be deployed in the federal agency space. So the federal government, every agency, is required to abide by it, so they should be selecting providers that have gone through FedRAMP authorization. So it is essentially a security and compliance program that companies voluntarily put themselves through to enable themselves to do work in the federal space. And uh, very happy to announce this morning that we were not only announcing our intent to develop a program and a product to enter the federal space, to have been selected by the FedRAMP program to go through what they call FedRAMP Connect. That's an accelerated process where the FedRAMP office selects cloud service providers that they feel you know, based on our application, have a high level of demand in the federal agency space. So they select those providers and work very closely with us to go through that compliance exercise and get authorized to be FedRAMP authorized uh, in the FedRAMP program. So the reason the government does that is they have a strong desire to get products like Smartsheet deployed quickly among the federal agencies because those people, think of them as an enterprise, they want all those great features that Ben talked about that we bring to enterprises in the public sector, they want them in the government agency sector as well. So we are very pleased that we were selected to go through this program and get a product to the marketplace in the federal space to help them improve how they work as well. So this isn't an entry into federal, because Smartsheet has great presence and traction in federal, NASA, the National Institutes of Health and Veterans Administration. I also Correct. saw from your website you've got customers in using Smartsheet in city governments and state governments, but this, this uh, FedRAMP Connect program, you mentioned it as an accelerator, but I think I heard you say that this was from demand from users, so this is yeah. that validation coming from right. the best place it can, right? Yeah, right. it's essentially right. demand in the federal marketplace. So we're going to go through on an accelerated basis and what that does, you're right, we are currently deployed in a large number of federal agencies, state and local government, but in those cases, we'll get deployed on a limited basis because we don't have FedRAMP authorization and they will be careful about where we're deployed. Achieving FedRAMP authorizations gives those federal government agency CIOs and CISOs the ability to say Smartsheet can be deployed agency-wide because it's now authorized under the FedRAMP program. So let's talk about that from a product, maybe innovation standpoint. Mm -hmm. One of the things that's very clear from uh, today is how collaborative Smartsheet is with its customers and how influential they are in product innovation. Yeah. From a federal perspective, you were mentioning, Ignacio, that a lot of times they have the same requirements as enterprises and, and um, other organizations in the, public, in the private sector, but how are you guys working together? Are there tweaks and enhancements that you need to make to the technology to, as part of the FedRAMP Connect program? Yeah, for sure. Um, so one, one of the, you know, FedRAMP institutes a very strict regime of compliance, uh, audit, uh, security controls onto the product, and it ensures that we're really operating at the highest level of rigor uh, and delivering a, a, a service that is highly reliable, highly scalable, fully audited, uh, and and secure. Um, so that. You know, that requires us to invest in all of those areas. Um, and the, the nice thing about, about FedRAMP for you know, even the non-federal customers is that we make those investments consistently across the service. So while FedRAMP is an isolated instance of Smartsheet, all of Smartsheet can take advantage of the practices and procedures. Um, we don't want to have to do things two different ways right. in two different parts of the service, so we, impl you know, we impose a lot of those same, uh, those same practices and procedures 
features and hardening of the service across the across the board. And so that that helps us to I think you know meet our 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 uh, promise to our customers that are not federal customers that we're delivering a true enterprise grade, fully scaled and reliable solution that they can depend on. Um, and so. the flip side is true. Everything that Ben's team is working on, as you said, the customers cheer when we announce something, it was on our roadmap because they wanted it. So our federal customers, they would want and desire the same things that Ben's team has been developing, uh, automation, you know, any of those tools, because they want to work efficiently and effectively and collaborate the same way all the um, private sector Exactly, yeah, exactly. That's right. I mean, you saw that this morning in the, in the keynote, right, where we, uh, we heard from the you know, North Carolina Department of Transportation. And you know, this is a, a federal agency that's using the power of Smartsheet to build a solution in you know, mere days rather than having to outsource it or wait for you know, a large scale IT spend and an RFP and all of these things, we're, we're empowering these agencies to build solutions, the, the, the people on the ground you know, are able to put together a solution that, that is you know, uh, really you know, saving people's lives. That, and, exactly, you know, that was was a, that's a, you know, a Hurricane Florence that just hit, that's a life and death situation. Yeah, and it was, it was, you know, it was, it was breathtaking and a sort of moment of pride to see, uh, to see how quickly they were able to put that together, um, and that's, that's the power of smart chains. We're really excited to bring that to the rest of, of the federal government. We see a, a tremendous amount of, uh, of desire uh, from, from them for that. So Ignacio, uh, in terms of the, the Federal Connect program, you mentioned it's going to allow uh, an acceleration of this process for you. What would it normally take if you weren't part of this Connect program? I'm just curious kind of how much advantage you'll get that you'll be able to pass through to your federal and non-federal customers. Yeah, so very good point and good question. Um, the statistics you often see thrown around about companies cloud service providers that want to get a product into the uh, FedRAMP authorization space is they'll spend on average a couple years, two years, and a million plus dollars. So it's not a small task to get FedRAMP authorized. Being part of that FedRAMP Connect Accelerated program, we are working with what's called the JAB, the Joint Advisory Board. So the top three CIOs of the FedRAMP program, they work alongside us if we're willing to invest the time and the dollars to take our product through to do it on this accelerated basis. So it is literally a joint effort, hand in hand, working with the FedRAMP office, the auditors we use for it, and our people to demonstrate that we've got the enterprise grade security and that we can meet the ongoing monitoring submissions that have to be done. So, so cost avoidance of a million dollars from two years, what are you expecting? And if you can't share that, that's okay. I'm just right. curious, is it going to be six months, a year? Well, if you look at the, the FedRAMP Connect program, uh, on average, it runs approximately six months. Um, so it's back and forth, it's a three-way collaboration between the cloud service provider, the FedRAMP office, and the auditors. But that program, their goal is to get it into you know, approximately a six month timeline. So we were announced last week, so I think we've said you know, our goal is to work with them on that timeline and early in calendar year yeah. 2019 is the, the timeline end that we all have on our radar. That's like back to the future acceleration. No uh, wonder you're excited about that. We are, and we're uh, we're, we're going to try to go faster than, uh, than than that if we if we, if we yep. can manage it on uh, on the product side. But we'll we'll see uh, we'll see how quickly it goes. Well, that's one of the things that not only is that validation from the the users within the federal government that they want this, but Ben, as you were saying, we're not developing things in isolation or certain features for this market and this market can't use it. This is all going to be accelerating, I imagine, what Smartsheet is innovating to deliver to all segments globally. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, we, we see an increasing need for uh, you know, manageability and security capabilities within the platform, and our, our customers are asking for this across the board. Uh, you know, a great example, another feature we announced today is uh, what we call the event monitoring service. So, um, you know, enterprise IT wants to understand 
who is doing what on the system. They want to be able to impose business rules, make sure that highly confidential information isn't being shared inappropriately. Um, so you know, we've we've invested in a system that we uh, that we announced today that basically keeps track of all events that happen within the system, anything that's shared, new documents that are created, and so forth, um, and gives the IT administrator a way to. Um, track that feed and make business decisions on the, on the basis of it. Uh, integrating with uh, other CASB solutions uh, uh, to, to track business, you know, to drive business rules. Uh, so for example, we have customers that are using this system today uh, to keep track of all of the attachments that are being added into their environment. Um, uh, when they see an attachment being added, they're able to go and look at that attachment, make sure that it's, you know, if, if it's a highly confidential thing uh, and that it's shared with an inappropriate set of folks, then they can take business action automatically uh, to manage that uh, that environment, um, and that that's the kind of you know sort of security and and, and audit control that uh, that enterprises need in order to feel comfortable deploying SmartSheet at, at wide scale. So we're very excited to be able to offer that uh, to those uh, to those enterprise administrators, um, and 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 help them you know foster SmartSheet adoption within the, the so company. So some of the things that we've talked about today are you know this is technology that was designed for the business. User, I've used it. Um, I think I read a quote from Mark Mader that may have been from the press release for the IPO a few months ago that said, and you know, in the beginning, in the early days, 12 years ago, there were critics that said, "Why are you guys building this on a spreadsheet construct?" And his answer, and SmartSheet's answer, at a very small company at that time, was that you know, 500 million people are familiar with yeah. this. Yep. So building something for business users, lines of business, finance, IT. Uh, sales, for example, tools that I, as a marketing person, don't need to be an IT expert. I don't need to even know what an API is or what it stands for, right? But you're also now, as you were saying, some of the new enhancements to facilitate mm -hmm. IT. So what's that kind of yin and yang with designing a tool that is for yeah. the average user and ensuring that the IT folks who weren't yeah. probably involved in the first place are, are able to manage this successfully. Yeah, well, it, it's, it's definitely a balance that, that we have to maintain. Uh, we, 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 never, we can never lose sight of the fact that the, the end user is at the center of what we do, uh, and that we have to design for uh, solutions that end users can, can implement themselves, and that's, that, that's at the heart of what Smartsheet does. At the same time, we look at IT administrators as partners. Um, we know that the users are, you know, the, the users love what, what the product does, they're desperate for it, and in general I find that IT administrators are not trying to get in the way of what their users want. They want to be the hero and they want to be able to say yes. And so my, you know, part of my job is to make sure that I give them the tools to enable them to get to a yes. That I can show them that we are secure enough and reliable enough and scalable enough that we meet their, you know, their strategic enterprise needs, um, that we integrate with the other systems that they have so that they're not building a, an island that they're going to have to you know, deal with and can't, you know, doesn't connect with the rest of their estate, and that they've got the tools to manage at scale so that you know, I'm not asking them to go one by one adding a thousand users, that's just not nice and, and fair. Um, so I think we, you know, we keep, the, we keep the, the end user, the business user at, at the center, um, and we look at IT as a, as a partner and we try to find ways to help them get to yes with the, with the product. And I, I don't think those two things are really in conflict. It, it's interesting, dealing with CIOs of our customers, they'll tell you it's very strange and it goes back to what you said early, value. So CIOs are tasked with delivering the most value for their organization, doing more for less efficiently, and that often means selection of tools that then they have to go and force into an organization and deal with uh, users that might be less than happy. I've had CIOs tell me on the phone, I have people putting together petitions to make Smartsheet the tool that we use across the organization. And so he said, that makes my life easy. I just need to work with you guys to make sure you've got the security, you've got all the tools I need as a CIO right, right. to protect the enterprise, but I don't have to worry about user acceptance. That's a, that's a unique spot and we love it when the CIOs say, this makes my life 
easier with oh, everything we're doing. Oh, that's music to your ears. Yeah, Absolutely. It, it totally yeah. is. I mean, I have a, uh, I met with a, a tech CIO recently as part of our, and was talking to him about, oh, well, are you, are you going to come to engage? And, uh, and oh, well, you know, we're busy and we don't have a thing. And we're, uh, and I said, oh, well, you know, actually there's, um, there's eight people from your company you know, business users that are attending, that are, that are attending, nice. uh, you know, that are attending the conference on their own dime, and that you know, you could see the sort of light bulb go off in his eyes, and he's like, uh, "Okay, if eight people from our business groups are paying their own money to go to a tech conference, that's something I need to be, I need to be paying attention to. How do you, how can you help me, you know, get my get my arms wrapped around this and, yeah. and help our help our users? So, that's well, a, it's a nice position to be in. It absolutely is. Well, we're uh, congratulations on being Thank in you. the FedRAMP Connect program. Uh, we're excited to hear next year all the great things coming out of that. And Ben, Ignacio, thanks so much for stopping by. Thanks for this having busy us. busy event and sharing with us what's going on from your perspectives. Thanks a lot, thanks thank for having you. us. We want to thank you for watching theCUBE. I'm Lisa Martin, live from Smartsheet Engage 2018 in Bellevue, Washington. Stick around, I'll be right back with Jeff Frick and our next guest.